Father, as we just sang, in times of blessings and in times of darkness, blessed be the name of Jesus. In his name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it's not like every morning you probably get up and say to yourself, you know, I think I'll read the book of Habakkuk. It's been a long time since he and I have gotten together and connected. I think I really want to read those three chapters and see how Habakkuk can speak to my life in the year 2022. But he actually does speak into our lives and into our hearts and into our minds when he says, not only in everything he wrote that we heard about earlier, but when particularly he says in chapter 2, verse 4, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Habakkuk is dealing with a lot of stuff that he's not happy about. He's not a happy sailor. He's not happy with God. And in these three chapters, basically, he complains to God and levels two complaints towards his way. And I'm going to give you a much shorter version of this sermon than I did last night. Now, I always say that, but we got a lot packed into this service today. Basically, he's complaining about two things. He's saying, first of all, how long will evil prevail? How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Sound familiar when we're praying? I cry to you, violence. And we see violence in the world today. And we remember the five-year anniversary of the, the largest massacre on the soil of the U.S. The rampage that took place, October 1. We see things going all over the world. There's conflict and tension in the world. We see violence going on with one country invading another country and all kinds of stuff happening. And, and, it's, and Habakkuk goes on to say, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at the injustice that's going around in the world? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. Their strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed, meaning, you know, the laws of the land, people don't even heed to them. They don't even carry them out. The laws of the land don't mean anything. They're paralyzed. And justice, he says, never prevails. Always use the word, never use the word always and never, right? The dude's upset. He wants God's intervention. He's wondering why God is letting all this stuff happen. The wicked, him and the righteous, he goes on to say. In other words, the, rich, the, the righteous seem to be better off than those who are in church like we are. What's up with that? He says, so that justice is perverted. It's the problem of evil, is it not? And we see evil, you know, all around us. We can look at the daily news, we can look, look through our social media threads and, and see, you know, Satan's activity uh, with invasions and, and wars going on. And, and then there's strife with hurricanes taking place too, you know, sign of the end times and, and famines going on and, and people are hurting. And we're wondering, where are you, Lord? Do you not even care? Are you ever going to intervene? Are you going to let us go on with our misery and our miserableness? And then his second lament is this. Why are you going to allow Babylon, which is northern Iraq now, right now, why are you going to allow an even more wicked nation? We know we're wicked and we know we're evil and we've been worshiping false gods and you have a right to punish us and we know that we're going to be launched into exile because Habakkuk was teaching or preaching around 605 B.C., right before the Babylonians came in and took over Judah, the southern kingdom. Why are you going to allow a nation even more perverse than we are to come and destroy us? And Habakkuk is saying, what's up, Lord? But then he goes on to say, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. Now, this was used by prophets, these watchtowers, to, to show an attitude of expectation of, of patient waiting and watching for God's response. You know, these watchtowers, you'd get up, and by the way, when I was in Israel, we'd see this 
all, everywhere. You see on the mountaintops, you usually see an Israeli post or you see a Syrian post. It doesn't matter where you went. Just like you can walk out of FGS and you can see mountains. On one side is Israel, on the other side might be Jordan, or it might be Syria, or it might be Lebanon, but they were clearly drawn. And you don't go over into the other person's territory. Even on the Jordan River, you know, where Jesus was baptized, one side of the Jordan was Israel, and the other the side of the, Jor the Jordan was the country of Jordan. And they had more armed weapon militia people over on the other side, and not near as busy as the Israel side and people getting baptized. And so you know clearly who the enemy is, and you know where to go, and you where, know where not to go. It's very clear, and there's landmines there too, just in case you want to do something you shouldn't be doing. So the, the watchtower guides would be up on these cliffs and hills and watch out for the enemy to come in. And so he said, you know, I'm going to stand watch, and I'm going to I'm going to wait for you, oh God. That's going to be my posture. I'm simply going to wait to see what your reply is, how you're going to answer my complaints. I will look to see what you will say to me and what answer I'm given to this complaint. And here comes the Lord's reply. Are you ready for it? The Lord replied, write down the revelation. This is important stuff. It's like Moses getting the Ten Commandments. He's putting it in writing. You know, my dad always said, if something's really important, you want to get it in writing. That's why you go see an attorney. You want it in writing. And he said, write this down, and you would make it plain on tablets so that a herald may actually run with it. And then he goes on to say in verse 3 of Habakkuk 2, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. An appointed time. Habakkuk, he was going to have to wait, and he was going to have to be a patient for the appointed time. Yes, Judea would be destroyed. Yes, they would go off into exile, but they would also come back and the temple would be rebuilt in God's appointed time. And same goes for us, you know, we don't know when God's gonna come back again to judge the living and the dead, but very often this side of heaven too, we wait like Habakkuk had to wait, amen? We wait for the light to turn green. We wait for our turn to get into the doctor's office. We wait for the preacher to stop preaching. We wait and wait and wait all the time. Waiting takes a lot of work. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Wait for his appointed time to work out whatever it is that is going on in your life. There was a time, uh, I think it was, in our, yeah, it was in our first week of our trip over in Israel, and it was either a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and we're, we're staying at a hotel by the, the Sea of Galilee, and that was probably my most favorite thing of the trip, is just being near the water, you know, and just watching the sun rise over the mountaintop, you know, gleaming on the Sea of Galilee while I drank my coffee, my Hebrew instant coffee, and had a, a Bible in front of me. But one of those evenings, about two or three in the morning, we heard some low-flying jets. Now, we can all picture that because at Nellis Air Force Base, you know, we see jets flying around, but usually they're off in the distance and we can still hear them loud and clear, right? Well, I remember just kind of being sleeping and hearing this rumbling and it got nearer and closer and closer and closer and these jets flew right over our hotel and I mean it shook the entire place and I woke up and went what the heck <laughs> was that and I thought wow um, that must have been some Israeli fighter pilots doing some training maybe at three or four in the morning I Tried to think the best, not the worst. But one of the guys on our trip, and I had a room by myself, and he was in the room next to us. I mean, it kind of freaked him out. It, it rattled him. He couldn't get back to sleep. And all he could think of, the next thing he was going to hear was, boo, you know, a bomb dropping, which didn't happen. But I went back to sleep, and... He wasn't able to, he said, but we found out that the next morning what was going on was uh, uh, Israeli jets were going over to Syria and dropping some guided missiles on the Damascus airport. 
Because what's happening is Iran, which is right next to Syria, is feeding Syria with weaponry, not by ground, but by air. And when the Israeli intelligence finds out that this shipment has come in, they send their pilots over there with these guided missiles. Now, some get intercepted and some don't. Some hit their intended targets, but it also killed six Syrian soldiers as well. And we're thinking, mm, here we are halfway around the world. Let's hope that Syria doesn't retaliate while we are visiting in the land of Israel. Maybe this is wrong place, wrong time. Ever had that happen before you? Where you said to yourself, man, you know, wrong place, wrong time. And then maybe you've been on the blessed side of things where you've said, ha, ha, right place, right time. You know, I won a gambling today or whatever. <laughs> and we thought, you know, if, if it does happen, actually we're in the right place at the right time. Because when you have a right relationship with God, when you have faith in his son Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins and that he rose again, you're in the right place. So no matter what happens to you and what time or what the appointed time is for you to go home, you're in the right place at the right time because the righteous will live by faith. All right. Harvest Festival. Some people, wrong place, wrong time. The 125 people who were stampeded at an, an Indonesian event yesterday probably thinking, wrong place, wrong time. You know, and there's lots of different shootings and things going on where we're saying to ourselves, wrong place, wrong time. I know a guy that after the, 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 the shootings here in Vegas five years ago this weekend, he said, man, I've had enough of this town, enough of this city. This place is unsafe. I'm moving to a small town, and I'm getting out of here, me and my family. So where do they move? To my home state. They moved to Texas. And he goes to Odessa, Texas, West Texas town, small oil fields, boring, nothing like Vegas. You know what happens to him? He gets shot at a rampage at a Walmart store. Wrong place, wrong time. I mean, he left Vegas for safety pastures. I don't think the answer is running and leaving. I think the answer is the righteous will live by faith. So no matter where you are, what situation you're in, what circumstance you are doing, whether it's a time of blessing or a time of darkness, you have faith in Jesus, the righteous live by faith, you are in the right place at the right time. Amen? One of our brothers uh, whose life we'll be celebrating next weekend, you know, Wayne Dibos, I taught for 35, 36 years, lived for, you know, 66 years of life, you know, fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer three to four years ago, admirable batter, battle, you know. But the Lord knew every day that was ordained for his life. Amen? He knew when Wayne was going to be born and he knew when he was going to take Wayne home to heaven and when his appointed time would be. I've got news for you, brothers and sisters. He knows when our appointed time is going to be as well. Amen? Amen. So my suggestion is that we continue to live and to walk by faith. This verse, Habakkuk chapter 2, four, verse 4, you can find it in Romans 1, 17. Say it with me, the righteous will live by faith. The righteous will live by faith. Galatians 3.11, same thing. Say it with me. The righteous will live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, right before the Hall of Faith chapter in chapter 11 says, the righteous will live by faith. God has the appointed time in our hand when we're going to leave this earth and join all believers in Jesus in heaven. Only God knows when Jesus is going to come again to judge the living and the dead. I say, along with Habakkuk, with Romans and Galatians and Hebrews and even 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, which says to walk by faith and not by sight, that we do exactly that until the Lord calls us home. 
Remember now and always, right place, right time, because the righteous will live by faith. And all God's people said,